Good morning everyone, how you doing? It's Paul here from Unusual Things and welcome to the Christmas special, okay? Now the reason why it's the Christmas special, I'll go into now, shall I? Now the reason why it's the Christmas special is because today we're coming to find what I believe is the final resting place of Greg Lake. Now Greg Lake was of course in the group Emerson, Lake and Palmer. I'll tell you a little bit more about that real soon. But not only that, Greg Lake released that Christmas song. I believe in Father Christmas. Da, da, da. I won't sing, your ears will bleed. Okay, so, but there is a slight dilemma with today's visit, okay? First of all, just to let you know, we're in Poole Cemetery. So in Poole, Dorset, just down the west coast from Portsmouth, from where I live. Um, about an hour and a bit's drive, not too far away, but I came here nice and early in the morning. It is, five past seven and the cemetery is open already so that's fantastic okay now um, but the dilemma is this is where his mum and dad are cremated and interred and from all the research I've done and all the asking and everything that I've been able to do apparently he is also interred here however his name is not on the gravestone but his parents are Okay, so it's one of those ones. We encounter these sometimes. And it's a shame because I really wanted to see Greg Lake's final resting place. As you all know, we've been to Keith Emerson. So if you're a fan of Emerson, Lake and Palmer, Keith Emerson's uh, grave visit is uh, on the channel. So you can go and check that out. Um, yeah, so it's the Christmas special. We're gonna go and find Greg Lake's final resting place, hopefully. If there's anyone out there that knows any different, please, of course, let us know right in the comments down below, won't you? Because it's really important that we try and find out as much information as we can when we're looking for these people's final resting places and we pay our respects. And like I say, with Greg's, this is as near as I can find. It's like, from what I've seen, he is interred with his parents, but his name's just not on the headstone. So we can just pay our respects um, today to Greg Lake, an amazing guy, uh, great musician. And of course, I love that Christmas song. Um, you all know the one. I don't need to sing it again. Anyway, don't forget, if you like the video today, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you a thing. It's just hit that subscribe button. That can be your Christmas present to me. Hit the subscribe button today if you haven't done so already. It's free. It doesn't cost you a thing, okay? I don't like the word subscribe, but it is what it is. And also hit the notification bell and you'll be notified as when new uh, videos come up. Look at this. A cold, eerie, cemetery in pool open so early i pulled in here about a like quarter to seven something like that there's no one here but i like it when it's like this adds that element to it doesn't it <whistles> little christmas element right we'll get on with things now and i'll tell you all about greg lake gregory stewart lake 10th of november 1947 to the 7th of december 2016 was an english bassist guitarist singer and songwriter he gained prominence as a founding member of the progressive rock bands King Crimson and Emerson Lake and Palmer. Greg Lake was born on the 10th of November 1947 in the Parkstone area of Poole in Dorset to Harry, an engineer, and Pearl, a housewife. He grew up in the residential suburb of Oakdale. Speaking about his childhood, Lake said he was born into asbestos prefab housing unit into a very poor family and remembered several cold winters at home, but credits his parents for sending him money and food during his time as a struggling musician. He later described his upbringing as a happy one. He discovered rock and roll in 1957 when he bought Little Richard's Lucille. At the age of 12, he first learned to play the guitar and wrote his first song, Lucky Man, which he didn't write down simply committing it to memory. He named his mother a pianist as his initial musical influence and she bought Lake a second-hand guitar to learn on. He then took guitar lessons from Don Strike, who had a shop in Westbourne. Strike taught him these awful Bert Whedon things, reading musical notation exercises with violin pieces by Niccolo Pagagini. 
and playing 1930s pop tunes, the latter which became an influence on Lake at the time. After roughly one year with Strike, Lake ended his tuition and wished to learn songs by The Shadows, a favourite band of his, but Strike wouldn't have any of it. Lake's second guitar was a pink Fender Stratocaster. Lake attended Oakdale Junior School followed by Henry Harbin Secondary Modern School and left the latter in 1963 or 64. He then took up work loading and unloading cargo at the pool docks and as a draftsman for a short period. He then decided to become a full-time musician at the age of 17. He joined his first band, Unit 4, playing cover songs as their singer and guitarist, but following their split in 1965, Lake and Unit 4 bassist Dave Jeans formed another covers group, The Time Checks, until 1966. He then became a member of The Shame, where he is featured on their single, Don't Go Away Little Girl, written by Janice Ian. During his stay in Carlisle for a gig, he contracted pneumonia and continued to perform on stage. His bandmates refused to drive back home that night, leaving him to sleep in a van where he woke up blue. When he got home, I was nearly dead. That was probably the worst I went through. Following a brief stint in the Shire Limbs in 1968, Lake was involved with the Gods, based in Hatfield, which he described as a very poor training college. But the group secured a residency at the Marquee Club in London. Lake left the group in 1968 over creative differences as the band were to enter the recording studio. The keyboardist Ken Hensley later said that Lake was far too talented to be kept in the background. In the 1960s, Lake formed a friendship with future King Crimson co-founder and guitarist Robert Fripp, who was also from Dorset and had also received lessons from Don Strike, and saw Lake perform in Unit Fall in Pool. Fripp was asked to be a roadie for a gig at Ventnor in the Isle of Wight, but no audience turned up. Consequently, Lake and Fripp decided to play tunes from their guitar lessons that Strike had taught them. In April 1970, Lake left King Crimson and joined with Emerson and drummer Carl Palmer of the crazy world of Arthur Brown and Atomic Rooster to form the progressive rock supergroup Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Lake began with a Fender bass before he switched to a Gibson Ripper. Lake also contributed some work on an acoustic and electric guitar to Emerson, Lake and Palmer and his voice had a wider and more diverse range than anything the Nice had previously recorded. Emerson, Lake and Palmer became one of the most successful groups in the 1970s. Lake became known for performing on an expensive Persian carpet on stage, refusing to take the stage unless it was present. It was often cited as an icon of the band's lavish and egocentric stage pieces. Years later, Lake confessed that the carpet was purchased to disguise a rubber mat he used to alleviate a fear of electrocution, which he had developed after an incident with a live microphone. Seinfeld, who went with Lake to purchase the carpet, felt that this was the only half the story, and said that Lake was driven to keep up with the Emerson's extravagant equipment. He was one of those classic keep up the Joneses cases. Emerson, Lake and Palmer conflicted between Emerson's interest in complex, classically influenced music and Lake's more straightforward rock tastes. Lake complained that Emerson chose to play the keys that were not good to fit his voice. During the making of the band's second album, Tarkus, Lake initially rejected the title track, but was persuaded to record it following a band meeting with management, which ended in the addition of an additional Lake tune, Battlefield, into the suite. Lake's track from the beginning, released on the trilogy in 1972, had no particular source of inspiration. I just felt an inspiration to do it, and it flowed through me in a natural way, he said. My hands fell upon these very unusual chords. It was kind of a gift. It was released as a single and reached number 39 in the US. In 1974, Emerson, Lake and Palmer took a break in activity. Lake used this time to focus on his family life, travel and to write and release music. By then the band were tax exiles and relocated to Switzerland, France, Canada and the Bahamas as they were restricted to two months stay in England per year. In March 1977, the band released Works Volume 1, a double album which each member of the group getting one side of an album for his solo music and the fourth side for the group to work together. Lake wrote five acoustic songs with lyrical assistance from Seinfeld with a conscious effort not to record just ballads and an attempt to a wider variety of music styles. He then incorporated orchestral overdubs to the songs one of them, C'est La Vie, was released as a single. Lake called the album the beginning of the end of the band, as he stopped producing their albums, neither of which were a really innovative record. 
In November 1977, the band released Works Volume 2. The band split up in 1979 following the unsuccessful album Love Beach, an album the group were contractually obliged to record. The group reformed for a number of years in the mid-90s and released two albums, Black Moon in 1992 and The Hot Seat in 1994, before permanently disbanding except for a 40-year anniversary one-off gig in 2010 at London's High Voltage Festival. I Believe in Father Christmas is a song by English musician Greg Lake, with lyrics by Peter Sinfield. Although it is often categorised as a Christmas song, this was not Lake's intention. He said that he wrote the song in protest at the commercialisation of Christmas. Seinfeld, however, said that the words are about the loss of innocence and childhood belief. The song was released in 1975 and reached number two on the UK singles chart, number 17 on the Irish single chart and number 98 in Australia. Lake died in London on December 2016 at the age of 69 after suffering from cancer. His manager announced the news on Twitter, describing Lake's battle with the illness as long and stubborn. So there's all the information there on Greg Lake, what an amazing musician he was. Ooh, look what I found. Um, we're going to have a little look at the door, see if there's uh, any openings at all. No, what a surprise, a padlock, never mind. Anyway, I just wanna show you this thing that I've seen. It's okay, we can take our time. It's the Christmas special, it doesn't matter, does it? I'm sure you don't mind, do you guys? Say yes, Paul, no, Paul, yes, Paul. <laughs> now, I love looking at old things like this, because A, think about the age of it, and B, you know, when it was obviously put here for said person, how much would this have cost back in the day? Here we go. Patricia Joyce Slade, New Cowden, 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 sorry. Born January 28th, 1926. Died 1st of February 2020, so not long ago. Uh, Philip Anderson Slade, born February 4th, 1921. Died 78th, 2014. Okay, so it's obviously part of the Slade family here, also of Agnes Slade, wife of John Hayter Slade, not a nice middle name is it, uh, 1942 is that, or 40, 42 I think, age 91 years. So I don't know whether the Slade family um, are, you know, of any sort of significance in terms, of, of course they are of significance because everyone is, but in terms of what they've done, you know, um, and I'm sure you amazing viewers will, of course, go and do your research and write in the comments, because you always do, because you're brilliant. Sarah Doris Slade, fourth daughter of John Hayter and Agnes Slade. So John Hayter seems to be the main name that's on here. So I wonder if that is anyone of any significance that we may or may not know about. But what's even funnier is, as it's the Christmas special and we're looking for Greg Lake's final resting place, we encounter Slade. Not Slade as in the group Slade, but of course it's Christmas, you know. You know where I'm going with it, don't you? Anyway, let's carry on and we'll have a look now for the final resting place, what we believe is the final resting place of Greg Lake. Like I say, I know for a fact that his parents are interred in here. Um, I know what the headstone looks like. I've seen a picture of it doing my research, um, but I just wanna know. It's that $64 million question, isn't it? Is Greg interred with them? Um, and of course, as always, if any family members of Greg are watching, this is made with the utmost respect and uh, you know, I've just come to tell his story like I do with all my videos. Um, but as it's the Christmas one, I wanted to find something and someone that had a connection to Christmas, which believe me, is a lot harder than what it seems. Now I hear some of you shouting and screaming at your television or mobile phone or whatever you're watching this on saying, why haven't you gone to Charles Dickens? Right, now of course, Charles Dickens, right, Scrooge, Oliver Twist and all that rest of it. Um, 
And I've been to his birthplace. Now that video's on my channel. Make sure my mic's all there. That video's on my channel. Of course, I haven't been to his final resting place yet, but I will do one day. However, I had to come down here today to film for this, because I wanted to do this one for Christmas, and someone else as well. Now, if, if, by any magic, who's that in my car? Some dude walking around in my car. If by any magical explanation, it won't happen, but if it's snowing in December, I filmed this in November, guys and gals, all right? So if we get to December and I'm walking around and like it's real snowing outside, um, yeah, I filmed this in November. Anyway, let's have a little look because, oh, there's about four squirrels here having a little punch up. Look like little baby ones. Um, so my car's parked over there. There's just some dude walking around, which is a bit weird. Looking in it, first thing in the morning. But he's disappeared now. Guess he wasn't a real person. Ah, now this looks like it's where the uh, cremated interns are. Oh, okay. So, I've been having a good look around. As you know. I think I found it. Let's have a look. Here we are. Happy memories of Harry R. Lake. At peace, 4th January 1982, age 64. Also his wife, Lily. At peace, 15th January 19. 88, age 71, reunited. Okay, so here is the final resting place of Harry and Lily, Greg Lake's parents, of course. Um, and like I say, I've heard that Greg was cremated and interred here with them. Uh, two people have told me, and also my research as well. So, you know, we have to play a numbers game sometimes, and that seems to be the majority thing from what I've seen. Um, so I'm just looking over there, because I've just seen another lake, and I had to look twice then, but it's not, but it's another Harry Lake. I'll show you in a minute, anyway. But I know this is, this is the one from the picture I've seen. So, um, if Greg is interred here, bless you all. Thank you, Greg, for your amazing contribution towards the music industry. Um, such an amazing guy. And especially, of course, that well-known Christmas song that we all love. Um, great, great track. And it's one of those ones, it's just chilled. You put your Christmas tunes on, you hear it, and you think, wow, it's a nice chill tune. So thank you so much. Um, Harry and Lily at the most, and possibly Greg. Bless you. Merry Christmas all. So there we have it, the final resting place of Greg Lake. We think from what we've looked into, what I've looked into and the research I've done. Now, I just want to show you this because, you know, I said there was another lake uh, across there. Here is the one that's opposite, but I know because of the year that his dad passed away. It's not this one, but... In loving memory, dear husband, dad and granddad, Harry Lake, 1920-1987. Never more thought away, love and remembered every day, and of Irene Lake. So I don't know whether they're related at all. Uh, I've not looked into that, but I just clocked it as I was looking across there from that Harry Lake. So it just seems weird to have two Harry Lakes so close to each other. So Harry, Lily, bless you both. Um, I'm just keeping my eyes open because sometimes you might see a little, ooh, and the, the, you know, and Greg's appear sort of thing. Um, but from what I'm led to believe, he is interred there with his parents. So, I hope you've enjoyed this little Christmas special to Greg Lake, of course. And like I said earlier on, the reason is because the Christmas song that he did. And it's very hard to find someone connected to Christmas or, you know, that's nearby or that is um, 
someone that's worth doing. But as, like I said earlier on, as I've done Keith Emerson from Emerson Lake and Palmer, uh, Carl Palmer's still alive, bless him. So um, keep going, Carl. Keep, keep the, uh, the memory alive of these guys. And uh, Greg Lake there. Anyway, whatever you're up to, um, I hope you all have a fantastic Christmas. Um, if you're on your own this Christmas, talk to a friend, a family member, or someone. You know, if you if you've got no one at all, um, get yourself down to like a cafe or something like that, and and try and you know say hello to a few people because there's a lot of people that are on their own over Christmas, and it's not a nice uh, feeling or experience for them, um, and especially. I'm not going to age range it, but usually it is the elderly, um, especially if they're stuck at home and uh, you know their mobility's reduced and things like that. So if you've got a neighbour and you know they're on their own, go and knock the door, wish them a happy Christmas, just talk to them for a little bit because uh, this time of year it's very difficult for some people, uh, and also people that feel depressed around this year as well. This time of year as well. Uh, you know, there's phone lines that you can ring. There's people you can talk to. Please, please, please um, go and talk to people if you need to. It's really important. Don't bottle things up inside, especially this time of year. It's hard. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's all the serious done. Serious stuff done. Have a lovely Christmas. Look after yourself. Stay safe. Um, and just enjoy it, won't you? And I'll see you all on the next one. Take it easy. Oh, 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 oh. Don't forget to like and your Christmas present to me is subscribe to the channel. That's all I ask for. Just subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you a thing, okay? Just hit that button and uh, that's all you have to do. And I'll see you all on the next one. Take it easy.